the plan for this is to be the second to last video where I, I don't know, I don't think the term shop talk is, is the right way to say it. More like you know, movement talk. But I don't even like that term because it talk because what movement are we talking about? All right movement what? I'll just I'll just get into it. I kind of want to move on from this stuff. I don't want to be talking about I don't want to be talking about Richard Spencer a whole bunch. Like that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to talk about Richard Spencer or Andrew Anglin or Weave, you know. I, I'm I'm not here to talk about these guys. I'm here to do my my thing. Okay, I, I have I have I have my program that I'm so I kind of want to get off of this, but I also, I don't know, I sort of feel like I have to talk about this stuff. The first thing to talk about is, is there was a comment in one of my videos uh, talking about optics cucking. And, and I was thinking, imagine if during the 1960s, you know, the anti-whites said like everything they openly supported. Like what if they came out, you know, supporting anti-white discrimination in universities in government hiring, you know, said we're going to try to get firms to discriminate against whites. We're going to, and, and we're going to label anybody who's opposed to anti-white discrimination. We're going to call them a hate group. Okay, we're going to try to associate them with Nazis. Okay, we're going to try to get, you know, people who are against anti-white discrimination. We're going to try to get them fired. We're going to, we're going to push an idea of quote-unquote white privilege. Like if they let all that out of the bag. And if they let people sort of go out and scream fuck white people back then, they would not have had the, as they, they would not have had so much success, right? They they would have had a much more difficult time of it. You know, even with the sympathetic media, I mean there's sympathetic media, but like A, it was probably a lot less sympathetic back then, and B, you know, a story's a, a story. It only takes one media outlet to break it. And, it's, you know, it's just they engaged in what people on poll call optics cucking. And, like, everyone does this. In an ideology, there's, like, stuff. There's, there's a whole bunch of priors. Okay, there's a whole system of beliefs. And they all build on each other over time. And they build to a kind of conclusion that... Had you known what the conclusion would be at the beginning of the process, you'd be horrified. Okay, that's kind of why, and, and so like, and so optics cucking is necessary because, because of that. So, but that said, that said, trying to say no to Nazis and and also no to something else. I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Uh, it's not even it's not cucking in any way because first because first off like I'm, I'm i'm sick of like i see kind of what mike is doing i see him as as cucking to the the nazi types cucking to the the stormer 1488 or crew i view him as cucking these people are not helpful like more importantly like hitler was like the hitler hitler was not a white nationalist you know at, at most you could say he was he was a german nationalist Okay, but remember, he thought that there was an Aryan strain in the Japanese and not in the Russians, right? So he was more sort of favorable to, to Japanese, view them as more of an Aryan warrior race than he thought of the Russians, right? And, and other Slavic peoples as, as having no Aryan strain within them. I mean, it's like he was not, you know, he was, I guess, like marginal. I mean, you could, you could point to some views that Hitler had that were like marginally pro-white, like he was pro-British Empire, you know, he wasn't a fan of the French, but he wasn't. But like, that's very thin gruel compared to what the other people at the time believed, right? Compared to like common views on race in Britain, France, and the United States, Hitler was, you know, I mean, Hitler was no more sort of white nationalist than them. In fact, probably a bit less so because he was so obsessed with Germany in particular, right? And of course, we know the results of his regime was you know, mass killings of a whole bunch of Slavs. Now, look, people can go back and talk about Hitler and say, you know, Hitler was massively lied about, you know, I have some sort of unconventional views of the camps, for example. But like, ultimately, like like this, but this is not white nationalism, okay? What does this have to do with with the white country? What does this have to do with that? You know, and, and it actually does have something to do with that, but in, in, a, in a negative way. Because what has happened, I don't know if this was some schemed, masterminded strategy, but what has happened is, like, a tactic is to link 
white identity with Hitler. And they succeeded. It's like, I'm not exactly sure certain how they did it, how they managed to link white identity with Hitler. Part of it had to do with, you know, they would say, oh, here are the Aryan racial theories. That's racial thinking. Thinking about race leads to Hitler. I, I, th- I think it was sort of a vague thing that happened. I don't know if it was masterminded. Maybe some people were sort of pushing that narrative. How, whatever. However it happened, that's how it happened. Okay, and they've managed to sort of link Nazi to white. Okay, even though like Hitler killed <laughs> millions of white people. So, so like anybody should be, if anybody should be anti-Hitler, it should be whites, right? More than anyone else. I mean, here's some like like a little factoid to, to consider is that the the Nazis didn't have uh, didn't racially segregate blacks into into their own units, whereas the United States did. Now you could say what you want about that. You could say that um, that there weren't enough blacks in Germany to to form their own units, or or it wasn't big enough of a deal for them to go through the hassle to do that. Fine, fine, you know. Probably. That's probably true. But but just, you know, it's just a little factoid to, to keep in mind, okay? That that the that the Nazi regime was not focused on race as we conceive of it. And they were massive and in effect they were massively anti white. They had ideas of race that were fanciful. Prior to the war in the United States and in Britain, there were anthropological conventions filled with people who by today's standards would be called quote unquote race realists denouncing the you know Hitler the German racial thinking at the time so it's not like like the the Nazi regime wasn't pro white then okay not at least not particularly i mean you could say that hitler had some views okay but but those weren't like but so did churchill so did so did you know probably the prime minister of france roosevelt who knows what i think roosevelt was a secret communist and had a whole lot of bad views but but publicly roosevelt didn't didn't say anything like that like the general white american public had had good views on those things so like there's nothing there's nothing particularly white nationalist about hitler like that's that's what's important to say like anything you know hitler being perhaps pro british empire you know a fa- maybe pro racial segregation in the united states you know these were conventional views that every that all the other white people at the time had Okay, so it's not, there's nothing particularly white nationalistic about Hitler. What is particular about Hitler is, is, is anti-Slavic, right, and anti-Jew as well. Like Hitler, the Hitler regime is not even a pro-white movement at the time. So that's the first problem. And the second problem, it's, it's a regime of incredible odium that, like, our enemies have managed to link to white interests. Okay, they've managed to draw that link. And... What is happening is you have idiots that I think are that they think like fall for it, right? It's it's just it's just kind of a stupidity. Um, they fall for it, and they think that you have to fight that fight some for some reason. They think that you have to that that you know that white nationalism is Hitler, and you have to defend Hitler. I'm I, I'm not quite exact, you know. And look, I understand that 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 the situation with Poland was not was was not so clear cut okay i understand the issue regarding the territories taken from world war i understand that germany brought poland into existence and then at the treaty of versailles poland repaid germany by taking a bunch of territory from germany i understand that i understand what poland did i understand that poland was an aggressor nation right to both to lithuania to czechoslovakia okay I, I, I know, okay? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a history channel bitch, okay? I also know about the, 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 the death camps that, that they, they, they certainly existed because the Soviets tell us so, right? We know they must have existed. Now, you know, the, the Western powers, they did investigations of all of the uh, supposed death camps in the West, Right, found that the purported death camps in the West, which had all sorts of testimony, the gas chambers at Dachau, the, the torture facilities at Bergen-Belsen, right, those were all found to be fake, fake testimony, fake, you know, fake memory, or, or whatever it is they're doing, right? I mean, you can say testimony, testimony, but we know that all that was fake. But, but we know that all the, the death camps in the East were all real, right, because the Soviets tell us so. Now, the Soviets did not allow any foreign observers to come in and investigate. That's true. That's true. But 
why would Stalin lie about something like that? So, th so, I, so I, I'm, I'm telling you, YouTube, Google, I'm not a Holocaust denier. The Soviets tell us that there are death camps, but all the death camps happen to be in the Soviet zone of occupation. You know, that that must be true. That is true. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know, okay. So just keep that in mind. That, that's definitely true. It's real. It happened. It, it must have happened. The Soviets tell us so. The Soviets wouldn't lie. Like, why would the Soviets lie about Hitler? Like, like do, uh, do they have some sort of axe to grind against Hitler to want to make Hitler look bad? Come on. Like, let's, let's get real here. Okay. But, it, you know, it, it, whatever about, 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 the, uh, uh, about Camp Auschwitz, like, it doesn't matter. Okay? Because the Nazis were still anti-white. They were still trying to kill... Uh, they, they, they were still... Well, they were still sort of indifferent to the lives of Slavs, or, or at least certain kinds of Slavs, at least to Poles and Ukrainians and, and, Bella and Russians. So that needs to go away. So they're not white nationalists, and they're used by our, by our enemy to link us to something very odious, to something very... To something, like... I'll say it like it's they're evil, <laughs> you know. Like the like they the hit the regime. They they were they were bad dudes. They were bad guys. They they were happy to start wars against other like. There's all sorts of stuff that they're saying. Like you don't you don't need the Holocaust, right? Like like, like you could look at their own statements. Like like David Irving when he's writing. Like David Irving is called like a you know a Hitler supporter or Hitler sympathizer. But like like when I read you know stuff about Hitler from David Irving. Doesn't sound good to me. You know, he's talking very casually about killing, you know, tens of thousands of people in war, you know, for, for narrow political aim. Like, this is a bad guy. He's a bad guy. Okay, so that's enough about that. Um, but that's kind of well established. I think most people, you know, I think that horse is kind of is dead at this point. Um, but I also think that it's important not just to say, hey, don't, don't have the swastika flags because it's um, bad optics, but also to say, don't have that because they're bad guys and they're anti-us. I think, and, and when you do that, that's, that's better because now you have a more sort of complete, you, you have better certainty because let's say, like, let's say you had sort of a policy of exclusion, which is where you could be sort of a, a Nazi in the background, just don't bring it to the events. It's like, you know, you have that policy versus a zero tolerance policy that you basically want to block out anyone who believes that stuff privately. And I see no, I see like zero reason to have anything other than a zero tolerance policy. Because think of it like this. Let's say, let's say there are only 10 bona fide Nazis. There are only, there are only 10 Hitlerites. Well, if there's only 10 of them, then there's no point there's it, it, then it's not worth it to have anything other than a zero tolerance policy because you know you'll only be pre preventing 10 people from your rallies right or 10 people from your events like it's not, it's just it's it's 10 people who cares okay so there's no reason so if it's only 10 people then there's no reason to have anything other than a zero tolerance policy it's not worth the complication or hassle of a more sophisticated policy if it's 10,000 people well, then you still definitely want a zero tolerance policy because, you know, 10,000 people, that's a lot of people that may be worth something in, in, in rally and events and stuff. But, but like with 10,000 people, it only takes one. It only takes one. It only takes one to show up at, a, at an event, you know, get on a table and, 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 and start waving do, doing doing the Roman salute, waving the flag, you know, waving the swastika flag, you know, it only takes one. And if there's ten thousand, it's all, it's a, it's almost a certainty that you're gonna get one who's gonna do that. Okay, I mean, I could see, for example, at, at like American Renaissance, I could see some guy get in there, you know, with his suit, and you know, pay the ticket, pay everything, get his suit in, and then like during that event. Especially if there's like an old media camera back there, if there's like a CNN camera, he could like pull out a, a bit of kind of a handkerchief flag of like a swastika and like wave it up, you know. And then if there's an old media camera in the background, they'll they'll take a picture, they'll have the video recording, and that'll be the event. That'll be that'll be the American Renaissance event, you know. And some you know, and just one guy could do that, and that's it. And it sucks. 
it sucks. It shouldn't be this way. I, you know, I totally agree. Like, I, I, I agree. It should not be this way. You know, the media should not be so dishonest to, to take one person's actions. But, but that's, that's just the reality. And it needs to be blocked out. It needs to be kept out. Okay. But I also, and here's another thing. This is going to be a bit more difficult. Or, or, or this is going to make a lot more people uh, angry. Is that that Confederate imagery should be shunned and kept out? Obviously, it's nowhere near as bad, but it's still bad. Okay. Um, moreover, the Confederacy, like the Confederacy, is not again. It's not white nationalism. Okay. It's it's just, it's not white nationalism. It's it's the the South. Okay. And there's a whole bunch of neo Confederates who are who are pro Southern secession. And they're pro-black, you know, and in, in that they, they they want blacks to be part of their you know new southern state, and they want to incorporate and integrate the blacks into the into the new South. Okay, so now, fair enough, you know that the Confederate flag, th- there's there's sort of a relation, there's sort of an intersection between the Confederate flag and white identity because, you know, there's a lot of people who are white nationalists for some reason also, like I I don't know, like the Confederate. Like, was the old Confederacy a white nationalist state? Maybe. Uh, uh, it, like, I don't know, but it had, but they had a whole bunch of black slaves, you know? So, like, the historically, was it what? Like, I, it's not something I want to be associated with. I mean, I don't want to be associated with the slave state, historically. Now, I understand that people who wave the flag today, the Confederate flag today, that they don't support slavery. I, I get that. But uh, but a lot of normies don't get that. A lot of normies may think, oh, these people want to bring back slavery. You know, it's not the stupidest thing in the world to think, given that it was a slaveholding regime. But but you know, but then you're in in there saying, no, it doesn't mean pro slavery. Um, that's in the past. It just means the South. But now, what are you doing? Now you're you're in the weeds explaining what the Confederate battle flag means. That's what you're doing. And like, why, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we wasting time explaining what the Confederate battle flag means to you versus what it meant in 1863? Why are we having this discussion? It's, this is not, this, this isn't us. Okay, this, this flag, it's not, it's not our people. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so, and, and so, and Southerners, like, they're being kind of, kind of assholes when, when they do this, when, when they bring all their Confederate stuff on board you know they're, they're being kind of dicks it's like like because what they're doing because like the confederate battle flag i mean it's not the kind of kill shot that the swastika is but it's very negative it's very negative connotations to most people okay it has very negative connotations now gre- now here's another thing white identity has negative connotations to most people fair enough but White identity, that's that that's the point. That's the end goal. That is the end. That is the end in itself. Okay? So it's, it's and, it, and so that's not something that can be avoided. That's just like that that's that's the end goal, right? Y- yes, white identity has is you know, when you say that to people, you know, they're gonna be kind of what is that and have vaguely negative ideas of what that is. Okay. I get it. You know, that's that's obviously gonna have negative connotations, okay? But you know, oh well, that's the situation we're in. That's that's the point. The point the point is is the white nationalism. That's that's the goal. That's 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 the end state. That's what we want. Okay. This Confederate stuff, this is not this is some other battle that is not germane to the end state. Okay? Like and in fact, you may be able to go so far as to say that Confederate identity has less odium than white identity. I don't know. I haven't seen surveys on that. It's possible. Uh, it's also certainly possible that it's that it stands more chance to gain ground in, like in the moment of interaction with another person because you can say, oh, it's not racial. We support Black Southerners being part of our country as well and equal rights and all that stuff. So then people may go, oh, well, that actually sounds okay. You know. So, so it may, like like Southern nationalism may ultimately have a better shot than white nationalism, like maybe, I don't know, 
I'd have, you know, that that's, it, it, it's, it's certainly, there's a plausible case that it could be. Um, there's also sort of a plausible case that it wouldn't be, is that there's, there's a lot of anti-Confederacy conditioning given that it's a slave state and stuff, you know. So, yeah, I, I don't know. That's sort of an open question whether or not um, the Confederacy or, or being Confederate is more or, or less, uh, has, is, it would be, has more or less sort of a PR effect, benefit than white identity. I don't know. Okay. But, but like it's, it doesn't matter because the, because the Confederacy is not the end state. It's just like, you're adding on another problem, right? We are like the, the battle's hard enough with white identity, right? That that's, that's hard enough. Okay. Why are we adding on the Confederacy as well? Even now people can say, sure. It's like, like, let's say like white identity. It's like this, this, this this like um 1000 pound stone that we're trying to, dr- to drag up a mountain okay and like you know and the confederates come along with their 500 pound stone which is the confederacy you know and they and they they're trying to bring that up and it's like why are you trying to bring this up why are you trying to bring up another stone we already have this 1000 pound stone it's really difficult to bring this up we don't need to add your 500 pound stone as well and then they respond by saying, well, I'll have you know, this stone isn't as heavy as white identity. It's like, well, okay, but we have to get the stone up. Like, this is the point. This is, this is, you know, white identity is it, okay? It's this or nothing, right? You're not going to have freedom of speech in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a multiracial country. You're not going to have a free economy where you can easily open businesses. You're not going to have, like, a middle class, okay? You, know, you need whites for all this stuff. You need whites for all this nice stuff, Okay. Um, so, so, so like you have to have like, like white identity is, is the end in itself. Southern nationalism is not so, like Southern nationalism d- doesn't, doesn't matter. Right? It, it don't matter. Okay. Um, I mean, so, and I get, and it's difficult. It's a, it's a difficult sort of argument to make because, because Southerners are, are, are shit on, right? You know, it's, it's hard to sort of get this because it's, it's, they're shit on the confederacy's lied about I, you know i know but but it's like and and so and so they want to and so they see it as sort of i guess a liberation to sort of to, to be proud southern confederate whatever but that's not that's not the point i understand that there that there's a great injustice in how the south is portrayed how whites in the south are portrayed you know they're 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 demonized and shat on in in, in media and, and in politics you know i i get it i get it but but like what what battles are we fighting like what are we fighting for are we fighting for you know are, like what are we fighting for right it, like basically i'm looking at the confederate flag i'm thinking is it white nationalism does it help us advance okay Th- those are the questions you need to ask every time like does does it help us advance? Is it white nationalism? Does it help us advance? And and the Nazi imagery is A, it's not white nationalism, and B, it definitely doesn't help us advance, right? Like white identity is like a thousand pound stone. The Nazi thing is like like a, a 10,000 pound stone, okay? And the Confederate thing, that may just be a 500 pound stone, but it's still another stone, right? It's still another thing that you have to, that you know, you, you're playing in, into you know, some conditioning. Now, the conditioning is not anywhere nearly... The anti-South, anti-Confederate conditioning isn't nearly as extreme as the anti-Hitler conditioning, right? It's nowhere near. So, but it's still, it's just not something, not something we need to be dealing with. Um, okay, so that's enough about that. That's That's why, like... And so, yeah, so if you're, if, if you're doing either Nazi imagery or you're doing Confederate imagery... You know, you need to ask yourself what, what, what is your goal here? What, 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 what is the point of that? Is this just sort of like, and if it's just, oh, I want to express myself, well, then you're being selfish, right? You're being, you're, you're putting your own personal self-expression above, you know, above, you know, your people, right? You're putting that first, right? You're putting the sort of, sort of, you know, the psychological, benefit or, or the, uh, the psychological satisfaction of of being confederate over and above you know what what needs to be done to actually work you call it optics cucking or whatever well sure cucking but like 
I, I've made I've made my point. I mean, do you, do you want to go to these events and spend like like what do you want to do? Do you do you want to spend a whole bunch of time arguing about the South with to people? Spend a whole bunch of time arguing about about the ins and outs and all the weeds about Southern nationalism, what it is today versus what it was then. Lies about what it was then. Lies about the Civil War then. Right, the battles, the battles of the historical record. Okay, it's just not, it's just not worth it. It's just another stone to drag up. Okay, so now I want to talk about uh, live events, and and I think you know, um, I'm kind of glad how, how how this is shaking out. It seems that you know, it, it seems sort of, sort of the common the common narrative that live events are bad, um, you know. I hear people trying to analogize to other movements. It's like, well, I don't know. Like, I guess maybe, you know, you know, like they had marches and stuff. But like, I think this is sort of a cargo cult mentality. Like they're looking at they're, they're looking at stuff that was sort of kind of a culmination. Like marches are not are, are, marches come come after marches come after come after victory or not. Maybe not victory, but they come after you've reached a certain level. Okay. But if you try to do marches before that level, you're just gonna get you're just gonna get shot on. Um, so because you don't control the post event spin, right? That's what matters. That's what most people are actually gonna see. What most people see is what is what the legacy media cameras show them. Okay, they turn on the TV, they see they see swastika, they see Confederate flags. Okay, which again not as bad as swastika, but but you know it's not good. Okay, so they see all these these this imagery. All right, then they have people saying, oh, violence. Violence at white nationalist rally. Or better yet, white supremacist rally. Violence, white nationalist rally. You know, Confederate battle flags. Nazi stuff. Thanks, thanks, Heimbach. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for, thanks, thanks for supporting, you know, the, a, a genocidal anti-white dictator who wanted to, you know, kill or enslave or expel, like, all the Slavs. All Slavic peoples, okay. Thanks, thanks, Heimbach. You know that's 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 real cool. It's real, real cool that you're promoting you're you're promoting that stuff, right? That, that anti-white maniac. Um, yeah. So you so we know how that that happens. And whenever you have a live event, like like talking to the media, it's like talking to cops, you know, or like talking to to an investigator. Who's trying to get you for like? Don't talk to these people. Like when you talk, like, like they're out to indict you. Like that is their goal, right? When they start, like when they start, like looking around stuff for like a story, they've all like they've already written in sort of the framework of how the story is gonna go. Like they've are they've written about like eighty percent of the story. All they need at that point when they're interviewing people. All they need are people to say the things that they need to sort of fill in fill in these certain slots, right? They need somebody to say, okay, you need the Hitler, you need the Confederacy, you need, right? You need to, you know, you need to hit a, f- a few certain points. There may be a few surprises. For example, Richard Spencer saying, like, I'm willing to die for this, right? That's kind of interesting and also sounds kind of crazy to a normie, okay? So they'll put that in. So there's like a few surprises, in the in the interviews, they say, "Oh, that's something that'll kind of freak normies out." Let's put that in, all right? So the, you know they'll they'll, but but broadly speaking, they already have they already have the story written. By the time they're talking to you, the story has been written, and they just want you to to, to dance like the monkey, do do the do a few things, all right? So, and you know they got that they you know they talk for you to they'll talk to, for you for three hours to to fish, for the quotes that they want. And eventually, over three hours, if, if you're just talking long enough, they'll get those quotes, pull those quotes. Um, that's why they have multiple cameras, so that their editing doesn't look so hackneyed. If they only had one camera, it, there'd be all these jumps, right? And it would be very hard to, to dishonestly edit. But but having multiple cameras allows them to dishonestly edit more easily and make you look like a fool. And I'm looking at that ABC thing, and like, you know... I'm not mad at Richard Spencer for for what he said in the in the in the interview. I'm I'm mad at him for doing the interview, <laughs> okay? Because like it, it like it can't end well. These people are not your friends. It cannot end well for you. It cannot, okay? 
Um, it, it, it just, yeah. The, the, I think most people have, have mo- most people who aren't idiots, they understand this. If they're, and if they don't understand this by now, they never will. I have a suspicion that that Richard Spencer, another thing Richard Spencer needs to sort of consider is that him being sort of the, the appointed leader by old media is, is he needs to keep doing that. Because if he doesn't keep doing that, then he's going to fade into irrelevance. Like, if Richard Spencer doesn't... For example, if Richard Spencer doesn't have, say, all these live events, and if Richard Spencer doesn't have um, old media talking to him, then what distinguishes him from anyone else? He doesn't... He, he's not a particularly interesting speaker. I mean, for example, I was uh, listening to that thing at Auburn, and, I, you know, and the event was entitled, like, Richard Spencer's Speech at Auburn or whatever. And there was one guy. Oh, I forgot his name. He was an, he was an old guy. He his speech was was kind of interesting. What was it Pat Dixon? I forget who he was. But there was him, but he was, he was an interesting speaker. And then there was of course Mike Enoch, and Mike Enoch's always always an interesting speaker. Then comes in Richard Spencer, and I'm listening to Richard, who's supposedly the main event, and I'm rich, I'm listening for like a few minutes, and I'm just like, you know, three four minutes later, I'm bored. I'm just bored. Like Richard Spencer saying a whole bunch of Richard Spencer things, and you know, I'm bored. <laughs> like, can, can we can you have Mike back on? You know, have Mike talk about anything. Have Mike talk about his issues he's having with his lawnmower. That'll be more interesting. I mean, yeah. um, so, but so. Oh, and another thing I wanted to sort of clear up um, regarding the live events, like, because uh, there was a comment, and and it's sort of a fair comment. And it basically said, what, what's, what's wrong with you, Ryan? Are you schizophrenic? Um, you posted one video that seemed to be in support of the Unite the Right event, and then you, support, and then you uploaded this other video attacking live, um, attacking it, and, 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 or, or not, not attacking, attacking the idea of doing things like this. And, uh, and so what's, what's wrong with you, Ryan? Aren't you, aren't you schizophrenic? Well, here's, and it, here's sort of a, a bind that I was in for a while. Um, the TRS people and the Daily Stormer people and, and the traditional Worker Party people, they were doing all these live events. Um, they had one in Pikeville. They had one. They had, they had them in a bunch of places. Um, you know, they get little counter-protesters. Local media would cover them, you know, and it would be, it would be what it was. It wouldn't blow up. It wouldn't be a disaster. Uh, local media would talk about them, but, but they would be largely ignored in the broader political sphere. And, you know, it, and it wouldn't actually do any harm. Um, now, I had been saying for a while, and unfortunately, I don't, I don't have videos saying this. Maybe I do. I'm not sure. But I don't recall any videos of me saying this. So I'm not on public record coming out against live IRL media, like confrontational media events. Um so I'm not on, on, on record having said that, so I guess I'll just sort of have to take my word that in private I was saying this. Um, but the problem is, like, if there's no disaster, you know, it's hard for me to make the case that this is going to lead to disaster, right? Like, it's hard for me. Like, there's Hellgate, but Hellgate was a while ago, and it's, you know, it's several months later they're doing these events. And, and you know, it sort of looks like they've learned their lesson from Hellgate and... It, it looks like the, it looks like they're able to sort of control things and keep things clamped down. So it was hard. It would it would be hard for me to come out and say don't do these live events. There's not a whole lot of potential upside, and there's a gigantic potential downside. I was, but but how could I say that when it wasn't happening, right? Like the downside just wasn't occurring. So, um, and then on the first night of the unite the right thing, it looked like. It was going okay. Like I, you know, on the first night of Unite the Right when they did the Tiki Torch rally, I, you know, I, I was, did, I didn't predict what would happen. I didn't know what was going to happen would happen. Right? I was, I was totally surprised. I was, I was totally blindsided. I was totally blindsided by what happened on that day. Okay. So, you know, I looked at the Tiki Torch rally and it was like, okay. And the thing is, like I made that video and it was sort of a, you know, I just got Premiere, Adobe Premiere, um, and I was sort of, and, and, I, and I was just trying to sort of make an, a little aesthetic video. That, that was sort of what I was doing. And of course, what I said at the beginning, I, at, now nowhere in the video did I make an explicit endorsement of the event. 
I just said, hey, you know, well, I didn't, at the beginning, I, I didn't say, hey, anything. I just, I just had the little music and the, and the, and the crying tranny. Uh, because the crying tranny is funny. Um, but also sort of the point, which is that, you know, look at how these people react in j- just the, the moment, just a little moment, a little sliver when they when it looks like they're, you know, on the on the ropes. Now, it's 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 it was a very small window. Obviously, by the next day, that wasn't the case at all. The counter protesters probably probably outnumbered the UTR people. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, but. But I was just saying, like in that little sliver, you know, we saw their psychological reaction to what it's like to live like us literally every day. So that's all. That's the point I was making. Um, and it wasn't an endorsement of the event, and I didn't expect that it would it would collapse like it did. Right now, the thing is, if I knew, you know, if I knew that night that the next day was going to be such a disaster, I obviously would not have made that video, and. You know, I would have, you know, yeah, I would not have made that video. But see, my thought is that this event, it looked like it was going how the previous events had been going, that it wasn't going to be a disaster. Now, I'm against these events, and I was against th- those events when I made that video. But, like, you know, what a, you know, what's the point of me coming out against it when it looks like it's going well? Especially when it had that TV tor- 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 when it had that tiki torch rally, that looked like it was pretty good. It was organized. There wasn't, there wasn't like, you know, there wasn't Nazi LARPing. They were all in polo shirts. They were all well dressed and they were all just saying, you know, they had, they had a good message. You will not replace us. You know, it's like, okay, that's, that's a decent message. I mean, you know, I give, give it a C. I mean, it's not a great line, but it's, you know, it's okay. You know, you don't have, you don't have symbols all over the place. You don't have stupid symbols all over, over the place. So that's, that's good. Okay, look, look, so so I thought it was okay. And this is kind of aesthetic, and you know I'll make a little video out of this. You know I'm I'm opposed to them doing this, but you know they're doing it, so why not make a little video? So that's sort of how I thought about this. I didn't expect that it was going to blow up, right? Um, so and that's that's why I made I made the video. Um, and so people think I'm like schizophrenic on this. It's like no, it's just in the early part, like at the beginning of the event, you know I it looked like it was going how the other events were going. And I kept my mouth shut about about sort of live events. At least kept my mouth shut publicly about the problems of live events, you know, because my criticisms wouldn't have any credibility because there hadn't been a disaster since Hailgate. So that's that's sort of how that, that that's sort of my defense of my of what looks like schizophrenia to a lot of people. Although, like really strictly speaking, I never came out in that first video openly endorsing the event. Right? I didn't do that. So, so yeah, that's just what that's what I think about live events and uh, and sort of my, my my defense of my sort of what f- from looking at it from a distance looks like hypocrisy in those two videos, but it's really it's really it's really not hypocrisy if you understand the intricacies of my thinking. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Moving on, um, yeah, I guess what I want to talk about here is is uh, is having nice things. Can we have nice things? Like, because what I, like, I'm looking at, at what Richard Spencer gets. I don't know exactly how much money Richard Spencer gets, but I have an idea. I also have an idea of how much TRS gets. I forget, I don't know, I forget if this is public information or not, so I won't say exactly how much they get. Okay. But TRS gets a bunch of money. Richard Spencer gets more money. I'll say for how much money Richard Spencer gets, it's more than a quarter of a million. Okay, we'll just say that. Um, now I look at that and I think, wow, you know what, you know, there's something that we, that, that I would I like to do a lot of time. Here's just one example of a really nice thing that we could have if we had somebody more competent with that money. You know, real, real talk here. Okay. Uh, you could go to universities, not to have stupid little events, but to go in and, and do studies. Like you ask a whole bunch of, bunch of, bunch of students there and you don't have to pay them. Like, first off, a lot of people, they're interested in, in doing studies. Like, you tell them, hey, we're going to present some arguments to you. You tell us how persuasive these arguments are to you, right? And f- first, you ask them a bunch of questions about their political beliefs. People are, are kind of narcissists, and so they like to tell you about their political beliefs, right? So so, so there's – I don't think you'd have to pay them a whole lot, you know. 
because um, it's because it's sort of interesting to them what they're doing. And so what you do is you ask them their political beliefs, and then you and then you give them a series of arguments, right? Um, and you do sort of A/B testing on on arguments, arguments for for white identity, what's persuasive, what's not, and like and you've asked them beforehand. Do you identify as liberal? Do you identify as conservative? Do you identify as libertarian? And you can go break it down more. Okay, are you a social conservative, economic conservative? Like, like, and so you can figure out, and, 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 and you have to do a whole bunch of these because you have to deal with like a whole bunch of different combinations. Like at each university, you may only get like 100 people, right? So you have to do a lot of these. But eventually, you know, you start to, to get data and, and figure out what kinds of arguments work with what political ideologies. And so what you can then do is begin to develop arguments for each ideology or each sort of political tendency, right? And basically, and so I think what what would end up happening is you would identify like four or five paths. Okay, you would identify, you know, the, you know, sort of like anti-authoritarian liberal path. Um the authoritarian, you may be even able to identify like the authoritarian liberal path. That I suspect there's probably no path for that kind of person. Um, you know, the sort of you know apolitical like like the apolitical person path. You know, and of course the the libertarian and conservative path. Um, like for and and also you know there's I'm sure there's plenty of work to be done on the conservative path. You know, figure out how to make that more efficient, figure out how to make that better, how to make that path work better, you know, do all this kind of kind of A-B testing and, and get arguments to work, you got arguments that work, right? And then, you know, at the end of that, you would have so much more than, than fucking, I don't know how much Unite the Right cost, um, but I know it costs a bunch of money, like I'm... You know, I understand, you know, there's the altright.com, there's a website. It's like, okay, cool, you know, but like what, I don't know, what use is that site? What use is altright.com? I mean, if you're interested in like, if people are talking about, well, it's useful to sort of keep articles, to keep sort of the, the community engaged and, and kept, then I, yeah, there's a purpose for that, right? But I think the right stuff does a bang up job on that. I don't think you need anything, you know. Now, unfortunately, I think the, the right stuff also causes people to, 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 to be against quote-unquote optics cutting. I think that's another problem, you know. Because Mike Enoch, he'll never, he'll never counter-signal Heimbach. He'll never counter-signal the 1488ers. He, like I think at most he'll say, take down the Nazi flags. But he, but he's not, but he won't, you know, he won't, he won't go the full measure that I think needs to be gone to deal with these, these people. Like, because fundamentally these people are supporting an anti-white, I've already been, I've already explained my, so... Uh, what else? Yeah, so, so, like, there's all sorts of good things that we could have, but, but it's, you know, like, let's, like, let's, let's test this stuff. Let's, let's figure stuff out. Let's create, and, and let's create sort of like a one-stop shop. Let's, you know, and we can hire multiple people. Like, I've sort of been trying, like, Sean and I sort of been doing this stuff sort of like volunteer, sort of just, you know, getting, you know, the, the, the petty shekels that, that we've gotten, but it's like, you know... I mean, I'm looking. I'm, it, it's it's just baffling to me just how much money you know Richard Spencer gets. Like, and the right stuff. Okay, I, I you know the right stuff. They they they're not. I mean, they get a bunch of money and they they run a uh, a decent website. So I'm not I'm not gonna. They're 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 not as so bad as Richard Spencer. Um, but it, but the, but there's all this money. It's like where's it going? It's going to nothing. Right, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot about the fucking Mises Institute. You know, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the Mises Institute. Like I remember looking, seeing how much money the Mises Institute got a year. I was like, "What the hell? Are you for real?" <laughs> like, it's, and also like a lot of think tanks get a, get a obscene amount of money for 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 nothing for just what little they do. Anyway, so so yeah, there's all sorts of good good things we could have. You know, people like to like, for example, people talk about real life activism, um, you know, but but like when you do real life activism, you got to be sort of you got to be smart. Right. You got to be kind of a ninja about it. Like like um, the the white student unions. That was good. Right. Because because what did it, what did that do? What did what did what did the white student union stuff do? It caused 
a whole bunch of people to to be anti-white. And a bunch of normies saw that. What they saw was a bunch of, you know, university people be anti-white. So that was good. That's good activism. Or there was another event where, like, um, you know, Identity Europa or, or some other group found some some statues and found a statue of like a like a ancient uh, not ancient but 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 a historical uh, uh, um, German empress right and put her in a burqa put the statue in a burqa and wrote on it something about they wrote they wrote some message underneath it about how like this is you know what Islam will do or or, or saying that this or, or saying like this is how women need to be in the new caliphate or something Um and yeah, they went in. It, it was quick. There was no announcement. There was no counter protest or anything. And it and it made a point. And it was a visually, you know, it, it was a it was a good visual, right? It was it was a gripping visual to normies to see. Look, this is this is your your great historical figure in a burqa because this, this is what Muslims want to do. Do you want this? Why do you, why is Merkel doing this to Germany? Okay, that's good activism, you know, um, or the the posters. Uh, the postering campaign that was done by um, by some people. Um, the posters uh, like that 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 were put out on a whole bunch of uh, universities and uh, like and the thing is on the poster that's great because that's a very controlled message, right? You, you don't you don't have to worry about some rando coming in spurging out Seagull Island all over the place, right? It's a very controlled message, okay. And what you say is is you say something sort of that's sort of you know, benign, that's sort of like, you know, white people have a right to interests, white people have a right to exist, white people have like, you know, and then so you have these posters with these very sort of benign messages, and then you have this just rage reaction against it, and the normies can see that. The normies look at the posters and say, this doesn't look too offensive, or, you know, or, you know, or, or saying like, white student, this doesn't look too offensive to me. And then they see the rage reaction, and that causes them to go, oh, geez, these SJWs are, are these SJWs are, are monsters. And that's good. That's good. That's good, effective activism. But you got to be smart about it. You can't just go out and like, you can't be... You can't just go out. You can't. You, you have to have like a plan and think about how the reactions are going to be. It's like you got to do jujitsu, right? Right? Because they're bigger than you. They're going to come after you. You have. You have to be smart. You have to be quick. You have to. You have to. You can't just go out and like, like when you go out in a big rally in a public area, you're you're going head on. Like it's it's like, it's like um. Okay, this is this is a well. It would be a convoluted analogy. Because I'm thinking it would be like the Tet Offensive, but the problem is even though the Tet Offensive was an absolute disaster for the North Vietnamese, uh, ironically enough, U.S. media painted it as a disaster for the U.S. and and that that sort of led to a collapse in public support for the war, even though it was a huge victory for the U.S. Because <laughs> what because the, the Tet Offensive, like up to that point, the Vietnamese had been sort of fighting guerrilla style, partisan style warfare because they were at material disadvantages all the time. They're at a massive material disadvantage, so they couldn't really in, in, go toe to toe with the Americans. They had to fight sort of indirectly. The Tet Offensive was, you know, they, they sort of husbanded a bunch of resources, marshaled it all into a, into a specific area, and then launched a massive offensive in that area, sort of going toe to toe with the Americans. And they had early offense, as all as all attacks do, because when you when you attack, you choose the point and you have overwhelming force at a, at a point. You always make gains in the beginning, right? And so that's what happened. Like the U.S. lost a few bases, you know. Reporters started freaking out because it's like, oh my god, we're losing. They're charging through. Oh god, this is collapsing. The front's collapsing. It's like no, they made a little bit of. They made a little breakthrough. Okay, nothing. You know, breakthroughs happen all the time. It's not the end of the world. Okay, and the U.S. troops sur- surrounded them. Pocketed them, carved them up, you know. The end, right? That that's. I think that's probably what happened. I don't know. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting that. I need to be careful about that, because because the Tet Offensive is something that people can easily look up. And I'm just shooting the shit here. I haven't properly prepared this video, um, but that's what that's what this Unite the Right did. It's, it's basically like, <laughs> like bring in, like let's go against our opponents at like. In the worst possible, like it's 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 like, like literally everything 
is wrong about that. Like first off, you have you don't they didn't have proper spur control. Okay? They didn't have proper they didn't say, "Okay, so you want to be in, but here's here's the thing. If you want to be in, you got to dress a certain way and we're going to fucking search you." Right? We're you know, you know, we're going to look at your pockets, make sure you're not hiding any Nazi or even Now, this is something that Richard Spencer would 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 never sort of condone is is to is to prohibit Confederate par- paraphernalia imagery but at the very least no nazi imagery okay that would be a huge improvement just just none of that right even if, if they limited it just to confederate imagery i think that's still bad but but anyway but it but but they didn't do any of that they didn't have they didn't have spur control you know they went out into into the public in and of course they went into a college town <laughs> Fuck. right so they went into a college town where they they were like guaranteed to have massive negative reaction, okay, um, you know they were dependent upon the government. They were dependent upon the local government protecting their event, right? And they're playing into, like, and and and, and they're basically they're, and they're and they're taking and they're and the event of course is is was all covered by legacy media, all covered by old media, the the anti white media, okay. I mean. It's just, ugh. like, how stupid can you be? Like, it, like they basically, like, 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 it, it, it almost didn't matter, and and it didn't matter. It didn't matter what Richard Spencer did there. You know, it didn't matter what what any of the people at the event did at the event. It didn't matter at all, right? The, because the stage was set the just at the moment they went there, right? Like it was like. You know, just sort of looking back on it, the problem is I didn't really think that much about it. I just thought Unite the Right, it was going to be another one of these dumb little, uh, you know, dumb little events, kind of like Pikeville. I think there are some other ones. And it wasn't going to amount to much. It was going to, it was going to, it was going to come, it was going to go, and that would be it, right? It, and, and, and I would be like, you know, I would be thinking, oh, good, we dodged another bullet, right? That's, that's what I thought it would be. But I guess looking back on it, I guess I should have seen the signs, you know? I, I didn't have the foresight. I have the hindsight, uh, but I, I, I didn't have the I didn't have the foresight. I guess I should have saw the signs and like they basically are doing everything wrong. It's like it's like they're it's like the Tet Offensive, you know, except that we don't have a <laughs> it, it, it's like the, the Tet Offensive in terms of like they're attacking the enemy at their strongest point. You know, using the Nazi linkage, right? How they've been able to link Nazi with white identity, play into that linkage, Confederate as well. Okay, we'll add that on. Um, you know, dependent on spin from old media. Okay, you know, just like how <laughs> it's just unbelievably bad. You know, uh, when you think about it, and when you compare this to what say, you know, Identity Europa does. It's, it's no contest. Or you compare this to the white student unions, or you compare this to the postering. Okay, it's, just, it's no contest, which has had a better effect. It's, it's just, so, and, and like, it's like you're a small army. You know, you don't engage them out in the field, out in the open and stuff like that. You have to, you have to be smart. You have to, you have to use, you have to be a little bit savvy. Okay, you can't just just go out and, and say we're gonna march and take over the street. You're just gonna get blasted, right? You know, it's like let's 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 take on an enemy, you know, a hundred times our size, and just square up and 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 hit them straight up at their strongest point. Like, <laughs> like really? I mean, I mean, if I, I mean, it's almost like what some fed or not fed but it's almost like what some sort of infiltrator would want you to do if they wanted you to fail right if 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 they if they were to design an event that was going to end in disaster like charlottesville seems to be pretty close like 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 what if here here's here's ryan's what if here what if cuz cuz mike enoch's genuine okay i've known mike way back Okay, I know he's he's genuine. I, I've I've sort of seen his intellectual progression at a rate of one day per day. Okay, um, so I I, I know. I mean, if, if he is some sort of op, if he is either some sort of SPLC 
ADL or even a Fed shill, whatever, then he is like, <laughs> like, because this is like a six year operation. I mean, this is like a, a deep end bed that is beyond like, like it would be the most amazing thing ever. I, I would just be absolutely stunned. If, if, so, but it seems to me that some like, like what if some people got to Mike, got to Sven, got to Richard and convinced them, you know, th- and these people are up to no good. Okay. They want the movement to fail. They, they want white identity to fail. They want it to be dragged, you know, in, in, into Nazism, into LARPing, and into, dis, into destruction, right? Charlottesville is exactly what they would want. Like, Charlottesville is, is perfect. Um, you know, Mike Thernovich, who I'm not totally fond of because I, I, I kind of don't like Thernovich because of his... Um, you know, the way he, he dealt with Baked Alaska and wanting to sue him, that was, like, really shitty. Uh, but, uh, you know, Thernovich, he was talking about the Tiki Torch marches, and, what, and he brought up something that I thought was, uh, made a little bit of sense. He was saying, hey, you know, if you, you know, you have all those Tiki Torches that are illuminating your faces, you know, line up in rows, so, and, 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 and so you have um, a few opposition people taking pictures of everything taking recordings of everything well guess what now you have your face illuminated in rows chick 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 got all those faces and i'm thinking you know what i think mike that sounds he might have a point you know and it seems like something that somebody that somebody who's trying to socially engineer the movement to fail Right, I think what you'd want to do is you'd want to get to Mike, you get to Sven, you'd get to Richard Spencer, and you'd try to convince them to do. Uh, you try to convince them to 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 do what they did. You try to convince them to to never punch right. Okay, you know, you try to convince them to 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 stick with with the, with the, with the Hitler regime. To try to stick with Hitlerism and and all and all the the crap of Hitlerism. You know, and you try to convince them to, to, to sort of do stuff in the real world, right? Get out in the real world, um, you know, and I'm, and I, and I, you know, what did it happen? Is, is, are there some people trying to socially engineer others to, or, or trying to socially engineer sort of the, the, the heads of the alt-right to do really bad, bad things, to, to do really ineffective failure things? I don't know. Maybe. Like, like. If that did happen, you know, this is what you'd see. You know, if that did, if that was the case, if there were some people try, doing social engineering, trying to get, trying to push Mike and Richard and Sven to do really destructive things for, the, for, for, for white identity, you know, this, this is what you would see. Um, you know, and it's like, yeah. So that's just sort of how, how, I, how I look at all this stuff. Um, I said this would be sort of the second, this would be the second to last video on all this stuff. And because, because there's another video I want to make. I don't want to really talk about what's going to be in it. It's going to be shorter. Um, it's, it's going to, I'm not going to be talking about all the, all these things again, but you know, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be shorter and it'll be about something related to this stuff, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into this stuff again. I mean, this is sort of like, I don't, I view this as sort of like, um, I, I don't want to do this a whole lot. You know, because I don't, I don't want to focus on. Like, I'm not making. I don't want to make videos about these people. Um, I'll just say. I, I guess maybe I should make it, make make it clear here. You know, I like Mike. Okay. Um, but I think Mike's been convinced. Well, been convinced. Been convinced and convinced himself. Right. You know, I think he's. You know, Mike, Mike's Mike's a persuader more than he is a persuade e. Okay. He's he's a brainwasher. More than he is a brainwash e. So I, so, you know, when I say that he's sort of been convinced or persuaded, like part a lot of that self persuasion. You know, it's something I've said about you know Stefan Molyneux. People think like Stefan Molyneux saying all this stuff, back when he back when Stefan Molyneux was a bit more culty. Um, you know, they would say stuff like Stefan Molyneux is like deliberately trying to trick these people. But one thing they sort of forget is that you know there's no big believer in Molyneux's philosophy than Molyneux himself, right? You know, there were even people back in the ANCAP days, you know, saying that, you know, that, that I was running, running a cult of, 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 
of emergentism or anarcho-capitalism or whatever, you know, if I was, I, I wasn't aware of it, okay? Because uh, I was a total believer in, 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 in all that stuff, right? There was, no bigger, there was no bigger believer in the philosophy of Ryan Falk and Fringe Elements than, than me, okay? So, so, any, so I just sort of want to make, make that, that clear. Uh, but I think, Mike, like with the, the no punching to the right stuff, I think, like, he was on to a lot of truth with that at the beginning, you know, especially when, like, a lot of the disavows, they, they, they don't score you any points, you know. And especially when you're under the gun and when, you, when you're under, like, an SJW attack. SJW attack. Uh, don't ever admit. Don't ever apologize. Don't ever, like, like there's, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of truth to, to don't, to don't cuck. You don't get any points for, because if you apologize, well, guess what? You've just, you've just validated all their criticisms and they're just going to, you know, what, you know, not, now you're mush and you know what, like where there's mush push. Okay. So, so if you mush, they're going to push. So I think Mike's got figured that out. Um, but like, but he's made a mistake in that these like Nazism is not, you know, he says, don't punch right. Well, Nazism isn't right. It's just crazy. It's not, it's not right. It's not, it's not right. And it's definitely not white. Okay. So, and, and I would go, and I would also say the same thing about the Confederate stuff, but you know, that's, a, a, um, a, it's, it's the same sort of thing, but it's not to, to anywhere near the degree. Okay. But so, so he was onto a lot of truth with the don't punch right thing at the beginning, but now he's, he's not, he's not, he, he's at the point where he's not punching literally anybody who comes in and says he's on your side right he's not excluding like anybody who comes in and says they're on his side he he won't exclude them um with some exception there's iron march people he'll exclude some people but like but like just sort of as a rule he won't exclude you if you're if you're on his side unless you do something unless you like it's really really bad okay and that's a standard that can be exploited, right? That sets you up for exploitation. That sets you up for, for being led down stupid. That, that sets you up for letting in a bunch of, bunch of spurgs into your events, fucking you over. That's what it sets you up for. So, you know, I hope you may take this to heart, you know. Um, I, I think, <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess I still have, have a lot of, I, I don't have faith in Richard Spencer, <laughs> I don't have faith in him at all, because he never, you know. Yeah, I, I I don't have faith in Richard Spencer. I, I don't have any any ideas that he's going to change or anything. He's I think he's 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 in his own. He's in Spencer land in in, in the stuff that he, he's off in his own little world. All his talking points are are he has his Richard Spencer. He's weird things come who we are. Um, so I don't have much faith in Spencer, right? But I do I do have hope for Mike. I think I think you know, Mike. There, you know, with with Mike and Sven, there's 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 something there. But otherwise, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of I kind of agree with Ramsey Paul a little bit. I think Ramsey Paul. Okay, Ramsey Paul's a little bit. Uh, he, he's kind of a Debbie Downer. Um, like remember during the election, he was talking about how oh Hillary's gonna win and it's gonna be really fucking bad. Um, and I made videos saying that's not the election's not quite what they say. Take a take a closer look at the polls. They're over. They're they're overweighting Democrats and stuff, you know. And of course, towards towards the end of the election, guess what? The polls started to behave themselves, right? You know, they start to weight properly. And basically, my corrections started to have no effect towards the end. As you got closer to the election, you know, the polls tightened. Oh, imagine that! <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You know, because these polls, they don't want to be caught with their pants down when it comes time to actually predict. I mean, they'll push all sorts of fake, fake numbers, fake crap, you know, months out from the election, you know, to try to generate a bandwagon effect in favor of their their candidate. But once it gets close to election time, they start they, they got to start having real results. And so they start to change. And so the polls start to converge with the reality as you get closer to the election. And and, and I saw that firsthand at, at a rate of at a rate of like. One day per day, I, I saw that happening. At a, at a, and so it's it's a real, it's not something that I can really sort of convey to the audience just how profound it was to, to see it happening like right before you. Like it's a, re, it's a real experience to see it happening right before you over the course of a month to see the polls start to converge with reality. It was like, wow, 
and 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 to see like the, the and to see them start to behave themselves in terms of how they weighted Democrats and Republicans to when the party ID weighting, and then by like before the election, the polls, <clears throat> the polls almost got it right. Um, outside outside of the Rust Belt area, outside of the uh, Southern Ohio Appalachia uh, radius, uh, which is the monster vote, which is something I talked about back then, was the. Uh, the, the 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 mega turnout amongst the uh, the white working class in the Rust Belt. Um, the polls the polls did not get that, and they they wouldn't get that. Okay, they, they wouldn't get that because the because because of the way polls work. So, but outside of that, outside of the uh, the Rust basically the Rust Belt bombshell, um, the polls basically got it right. Um, once you left the Rust Belt, that's why all these sort of battleground states out west is like, oh, can Trump? That's why sort of Trump's overperformance in the polls it occurred in Ohio. Matt, he won Ohio by like by by eight eight something points. You know, overperformance in Michigan, overperformance in Pennsylvania, overperformance in Wisconsin. That didn't translate out west. He didn't overperform in Colorado. He didn't overperform in, in New Mexico, and he didn't overperform in Nevada. So the poll, like the polls, were accurate outside of outside of the monster vote, which was which is the Rust Belt boom area. Um, so anyway, what was I? I forgot. I'm going off on a tangent here. Holy shit! I literally lost my train of thought. I literally lost my train of thought in, in the podcast. I remember I was talking about Ramsey Paul, talking about how Ramsey Paul's a bit of a Debbie Downer, talking about how he thinks things are are really bad. Uh, I fr- I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay. Well, I guess what I would say to that is, um, is Ramsey Paul is a bit of a Debbie Downer. Um, you know, don't shit yourself until like it actually happens. You know, when people talking about how you know th- there's gonna censor the alt right and, and and shut us down. Well, you know, let's you know let's let's see let's let's wait let's wait it out. Let's see how long this censorship push lasts. Let's see if let's see if they keep keep going going forward or if it or if they run out of steam you know um i don't but it sort of looks like like a coordinated like a like a big coordinated thing you know you have all these um institutions doing doing you know the, the hate purges and all, all the stuff all happening around the time of charlottesville and you have companies you know um shutting down you had GoDaddy shutting down daily stormer you know you had all these things happening all at the same time so it looks like 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 some sort of grand coordinated event. It may not be that way. It may just sort of appear that way. It may be that Charlottesville, and then a, a, a you know a massive media blast, a massive media gaslighting at- attack, cause a whole bunch of corporations to sort of shit themselves, and they, they and they and they then you know responded um, to to it, and so it ends up looking like a coordinated event when it's not a coordinated event. But yeah, I would you know. I, mean, I, I think Ramsey Paul is a bit over overly pessimistic. You know, we'll like look, we'll we'll see. You know, like like don't 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 lose it lose it just just yet. You know, Ramsey Paul, your channel hasn't been taken down. My channel hasn't been taken down. My site's still up. Now, granted, you know, we're sort of small fish, but it's we'll we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, um, I'm not quite as over the top as as the daily definitely as the daily stormer and i'm and obviously honestly i'm not nearly as over the top as as the daily showa you know the showa daily showa or any of, of these things and um you know i haven't i haven't had to deal with censorship you know i mean aside from people aside from sort of low level you know banning from facebook groups people that don't like me but i mean everyone's dealt with um but yeah i haven't had to deal with like real serious censorship for for quite a while so you know like We'll see, we'll see. Don't 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 shit, don't shit yourself self on that yet, you know. I'm, and I'm also still I'm still I'm still confident. I'm still confident that you know somehow new new speech forms will emerge, and that you know that what I said in the previous video about the inevitability of white nationalism, so long as a a political environment similar to that of folk politics of the past can be sustained, like I'm still confident that that's true. And that you know, there's that will that that you'll see the the rise of, of white nationalism. You know, there's also you know there's also that video I made about the demographic white pill of three reasons for quote unquote the right to be optimistic about the future. Like you know, don't don't get all don't get all down about this stuff. Um, 
I think it's important to get down about stuff that's in that's sort of in your control. Okay, um, you know, it's it's really sort of productive to be to to talk about that. It's not so productive to talk about to talk to people. I mean, it may be productive to talk about talk to normies about white demographics. Okay, because um, that that'll get get normies thinking and it's also been known that people become more conservative when they hear about whites becoming a minority or whites get more conservative when they hear about whites becoming a minority um so it, it, you know it's it's good it's good to them but it's not it's not effective to, to constantly gaslight your own side on this stuff right and, and and to be sort of depresso on you know to to you to your own side and it also and also like it's not true you know it's th- things are not as bad as, as, as they as they seem or as things are not so bad. I mean they're not great. <clears throat> you know, people's still getting banned. You know, Black Pigeon Speak still got his videos, you know, uh, not just demonetized but put in limited state, which means no comments or, or ratings. So I mean it's it's bad, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I don't know, has has Black Pigeon Speak has he posted another video recently? And was it in the limited state thing? So I don't know. It looks like they're not. It looks like they're not removing black black pigeon speaks. I don't know. So, yeah. So so there's lots of and the, you know there's lots of uh, there's lots of potential for good things to be done. You know, um, but you know we need competent leaders. We we have to have we have to not have idiots running things. You know we have to not have idiots. Yeah, we have to not have idiots running things. That's that's what we need. Because right now there's it's it's all idiots running things, and they're. You know, they're they're one point owing it up, doing live events and getting getting their asses kicked. And and it's also they've also sort of thrown away a lot of the the mystique of the alt right, because <clears throat> the mystique of the alt right was they have all these memes, they triggered all these people, these other people sort of got BTF out on the internet. But now, when you go out in the real world, well, guess what? All the advantages you have on the internet of of anonymity, you know, that's gone. You've just you've just thrown those advantages away, and you're outnumbered, and you have institutions going against you, like, like make like you know go, like it's it's the worst thing you could do, and of course and and I and one concern I have is that like, you know if you do like I think like that a lot of damage has already been done like like we can talk about going forward, but it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah I'm not, I just talked about being positive now I'm being all black pilly. Uh, but it's kind of I think like for for you know people are, are are responding to be saying oh look it, it looks good that sort of that 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 Richard Spencer you know figured this stuff out after this, this event it's like why did it take this event you know that, that's what I'm asked it's like why why do we have people like is this is it like is this what it's going to take for Richard Spencer to learn things like does Richard Spencer only learn things when like you know there's literally like, like, like is, is really? So basically, we're gonna have to take all these hits over and over and over again because Richard Spencer doesn't want to, can't learn because Richard Spencer is is of a kind of person that it takes this incredible amount of damage to learn anything. I think. I mean, I think the the alt right label is busted. Like, I'm certainly like I was always sort of a little bit tenuous about it because it's like, well, alt right. Well, who decides? You know. Also, like what Richard Spencer did with alt right, like. He came up with the label, then dropped it, then it got popular, and then he came back and said, "I'm alt right. I coined it." And now he and now he's in the process of destroying the label by 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 linking it with WN 1.0 because he can't keep his 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 events. He can't keep the shit locked down. Okay, that's it. That's that's enough of this video. I have to end the video somewhere. I'll end it.